In solo leveling your eyes, one of the most important things you can do is use the right weapon combinations because that really is what it's going to come down to. And it's not always do you have this weapon at certain levels. We're going to talk about that a lot too. But using the right weapons versus the content you're taking on may be the make or break deciding factor. So we're going to cover the best combinations and some of the things you may or may not have considered when it comes to these weapons, whether you have them at certain limit break levels or I guess in this game they're called advances. Limit breaks is something a little bit different, but regardless, uh, you have them at the right advances uh, for the weapon individually things like that so we're going to talk about a lot but i hope you guys enjoy if this video is helpful please remember to hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you are new about 80 percent of viewers aren't subscribed so if you're in that 80 make sure you do subscribe and post down below everybody listening what your three most used weapon combinations are now quick note on this is that while there's a good bit of weapons in the game, right? <laughs> We're obviously still gonna be adding more. So check d check the date on this video because I think that these will age well, but you know, if you watch this a year from now, right? Maybe that matters. Um, so right now, here's the deal. Plum Sword. I did a tier list video. Uh, it was a short, but not a full on video where I kind of talked about how between one, two, and three best weapons in the game, there's not really a sizable gap. I think you could shuffle those three in any order. And those three were the new Phoenix weapon, Plum Sword, and Moon Shadow, in my opinion. I explained a little bit in what, you know, a 60 second clip would allow me to explain. Um, <clears throat> I explained a little bit, but one of the things I talked about with this thing is that it's super versatile. Here's how it is with the weapon. It's, this is, the, this is how bad it is. Not how bad the weapon is, but how reliable we are, how reliable this weapon is, how, how much we rely on this weapon. If you are taking on a piece of content, it doesn't matter what the boss is weak to, your second weapon is going to be this thing, for the most part. Uh, for example, let's take on Vulcan. Okay, I'm going to grab my Thetis Grimoire. Okay, that's perfect. This thing just destroys him, especially with certain advances. You get the point. Uh, well, you could take Scatty as a second if you want to, but you're probably better off just taking Demon Flower, uh, Demon Plum Sour, Flower Sword. I hate the name of this thing um, because I always tongue twist it. But like, okay, let's take on something else. Weak to Wind. Okay, let's grab West Wind. Insane weapon. In fact, I'm going to advance it because I didn't realize I had that. <laughs> let's take West Wind. Well, our second weapon is going to be the one and only good and tried and true uh, Plum Sword. That's kind of the way that the game is right now with the meta for the game. So with that being said, Plum, we're going to start off with this. Uh, Plum, you're going to see it a lot in the video because it is the most important weapon to have, use, and max out. It took me a long time, but I finally got that fifth one like last week. Um, and this is the one that you want to have permanently on your selection rate up thing. You never want to see this thing off. You want to have this thing there until you get it at least A5. Okay, so after Plum Flower's swift flight is used, the user applies the Plum Flower effect. The Plum Flower effect increases critical hit damage by 12%, stacking up to three times with an infinite duration, okay? So he's going to be getting 36%, just with no dupes invested. This this does go up by two more stacks with the later dupes, by the way. 36% extra critical hit damage, just, just, for, just, just, just because. <laughs> and so criticals for Sung Jinu are insane, right? Uh, especially if you start critting on your ultimates and stuff, he just does so much damage and damage is king in this game. And that's one of the main reasons why, again, there are also two more stacks in the in the dupes that are in there. That's one of the main reasons why it's so valuable. Also, after successfully performing a dash, where you just press the dash button, followed by the Plum Flower Swift Flight, you apply full bloom. So here's the deal. You dash and then use this skill and then you get full bloom. And full bloom is pretty crazy too. Increases the usage speed of Plum Flower Swift Flight by 20%. So the speed of the attack also increases the user's attack by 4% and his critical hit rate by 4%. This one is restricted for eight seconds. However, that's fine. Getting a critical hit rate, attack, and damage bonus applied to you. Now, if you didn't understand, this goes to all weapons. If you didn't know how this works, anytime a weapon says increase your attack, your damage, your critical, Unless it specifically says it's only for the usage of said skill, this skill is universal. It means whatever weapon, this is why it's, it's valuable. Whatever other weapon you have paired with it is going to get the value of this effect as well, as long as the duration is still up. You know, this one has eight second duration, things like that. That's where it's valuable. And then down here, this thing gets really crazy with the first dupe. <laughs> because you pick up Amplifying Draw. This triggers basically when you just go for a dash. Uh, and what happens is you get... When the user sheathes after using Plum Flower Sword applies, I guess I was triggering it wrong, but whatever. Uh, I pretty much was getting it when I was going for dashes. But anyway, <clears throat> increases the chance of the next user attack 
uh, the next increases the chance of the user landing a critical hit on the next attack. I was all out of order by 32%. So it, it's not even just a flat crit rate. It's just the next hit is going to have a 32% increased chance to land a critical hit. That's insane. Just the next hit, though. So you want to go for amplifying draw straight into the ultimate or something like that or full bloom. You know, you want to do these things. It's not very hard to do. Um, and then increase the skill damage as well. But this is only for three seconds. So you've got to kind of go straight into whatever you're going to do. Dark damage increase. Very strong when paired with moon shadow because moon shadow gets that or the scythe also gets that. Oh, here it is. Here it is. I was like, I could have swore it was on the dash. It's the fourth, third dupe. So when you use the dash, you get amplifying draw. And another 32% critical hit damage. So that's why I was like, I'm pretty sure I was triggering this. So 32% chance to do a critical hit. Skill damage up by 32%. Another 32% critical hit damage for five seconds. <laughs> uh, amplifying draw lasts for five seconds and additionally increases critical hit damage. So basically, amplifying draw picks up the effect to increase critical hit damage as well. Is pretty much what that reads. And then down here decreases the cooldown of that skill, which everything revolves around that. And then the last dupe is insane. A little bit more dark damage, but you start off with two stacks automatically of Plum Flower, and you now can get five maximum. So this thing is a machine. Critical hit rate, damage, attack, all of it is in here. It's all applied for a good duration of time, some of it being infinite. Five infinite stacks of 12% extra critical hit damage is just crazy. So this thing is the de facto best weapon to be to be paired with something else so i had to spend like five minutes talking about this thing because the game is it just revolves around this thing and i can't you can't overrate this thing enough like you just can't it's it's perpetually useful okay so here are the best combinations so now that you kind of understand this even without any dupes this is still one of the best weapons to pair with anything so you're going to take x other weapon and pair it with it this thing paired with the Plum Sword, amazing. I really like the Scythe, uh, which you can get that first dupe for free from the challenges. Uh, when you're below 70%, you get a permanent 25% critical hit rate increase, as long as you're below that threshold. So there are some builds, uh, Blessing Stones, that can really help you with this. You don't want to have a lot of healing. You don't want to have a lot of team composition doing a lot of healing. You want to stay in that range. It's funny because it will heal you later on, but hey, it's cool. <laughs> that's, that's when you get to 60% or below. Uh, but the critical hit right there, coupling that with the dark damage increase on the second. Anyway, this thing just shreds. It does a lot of damage with the skill. It shreds when paired with the uh, moon shadow for all that crit stuff. And also, the crits are really strong on weapons that are going to do... And they pretty much all do this. But on weapons that do a lot of hits, obviously, that means more crits, more damage, blah, blah, blah. So this thing paired with Plum Sword is insane. If I didn't have Plum Sword at all, but I had the Scythe, what would I pair it with? It would be Theodos' Grimoire or Moonshadow, one of those two. Uh, so let's kind of segue from here. So Plum Sword, like I said, can be, if it wasn't clear, it can be paired with any weapon in the game. Okay, so that's, and it's going to be a top end combination. Uh, so Scythe without Plum Sword, you're not getting the critical hit damage. You get more flat kind of like attack increases, stuff like that. It makes you take more damage, which is good and bad. It's good because it helps you stay in that threshold that it wants you to be in. Uh, and you also get the extra attack increase. That's a nice trade-off. 15% attack is damn good. Um, that's fine, right? But then on top of that, too, it decreases the skill cooldown of that fourth dupe. But when you pair this with other weapons like Moonshadow, you get more effectiveness uh, out of it overall, especially when you have dupes in either for the extra dark damage increases. So Moonshadow is a crazy weapon uh, that slows down time for the opponent, allowing you to get those hits in, do more damage. And then when you have more stacks here, it's pretty crazy. Where's the that first dupe right here? The first dupe on this thing is pretty crazy. Enhances the effect of Full Moon and Lunar Eclipse. Uh, stacking three times, Lunar Eclipse. The target's damage taken increases by 15%. Increasing their damage taken is crazy uh especially when paired with these other dps based weapons so pairing that with the scythe is a really good combination especially because they're both dark where the grimoire is one of the best plugs as well uh i i think you could make an argument for the grimoire being the next best like weapon to pair with anything after moon after a uh, plum sword but i think there's a huge drop off huge drop off insane drop off right so where this thing is useful is for the freeze having its own utility, sure. 
But when you have cold ice effect, uh, when the effect ends, it deals additional damage to the target equal to 10% of their damage that you did during the duration of the freeze. That's good. Deep erosion is super damn strong. So it increases the damage taken by the target if they have elemental weakness. Ding, ding, ding. So if you are uh, up against an opponent that's weak, this should apply to your sub weapon as well. So, like, say this is the sub, I guess, and you're taking on uh, Egress in the story, and he's weak to, to light, so you could take Huntsman, and this should apply as well, making them take extra damage, assuming that they have uh, Cold Ice Deep Erosion applied. Um, so, there's that. So, it's really good. Just, just keep in mind, if you're using this, for example, uh, there is a cooldown on the freezes. Like, you can't freeze repeatedly, obviously, otherwise you'd be able to cheese stages. Some allies can freeze bosses, like uh, Alicia, for example. So, just keep that in mind. Like, if you're versus Vulcan, for example. Anyway, <clears throat> that one's a really good sub to plug in. Anyway, so moving on from there, another great combination is these two. This is one of the top end combinations, the Grimoire with the Plum Sword. This one capitalizes more on the Plum Sword being an insane damage dealer as well. Uh, but the Plum can also bring out the best of the Grimoire because the Grimoire also can do a crap ton of damage too. The thing with this thing is that like when you have them in Deep Erosion Cold Ice, it just does a lot of damage. <laughs> it does a lot. Also, this fifth dupe is crazy. Increases damage dealt to frozen targets. Good lord, this thing is insane with five dudes. All right, next combination that we're going to talk about is none other than Westwind. So Westwind is arguably the best weapon in the game. Uh, I have not gotten to the point where I've mastered this weapon. I've Well, to be fair, I don't go out of my way to use it. But it's one of those weapons that has an insane amount of damage. It's actually been nerfed. It was nerfed on Global Launch. So Early Access, we got to... You could go back and find videos of it from Early Access, and it's just doing millions and millions and millions of damage. It was crazy until they had to nerf it. But this thing is still really, really strong with all the stacking it does, all the damage it does with the bullets and the charging. Anything kind of charging in this game has a really high damage cap I've seen. Even like skills with Sung Jinu, they have a really high damage cap. So this one's going to pair really well with this one, obviously. Like I brought up earlier, now, at that point, you can again plug it with uh, Thetis's Grimoire. And then also another decent choice to plug with any weapon really is going to be the Shadow Scythe because of the crit rate increase as well, for the record. Last thing I'd kind of say is if you want to kind of keep things synergistic, if you've got the dupes on this thing and you want more flat wind damage and attack, this thing is a really solid one to plug. So I would like to kind of segue from here. And because I don't have it, I wanted to kind of move and talk about the new weapon because I'm realizing we're getting kind of deep into the video and I haven't talked about the new weapon yet. Anyway, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that thumbs up, subscribe. Like I said, post down below which combinations you're using because we are pretty much going to wrap soon. So I was looking for it. <laughs> Let's go to the weapons here. So uh, Phoenix Soul. This thing has, it's probably, aside from, aside from, uh, what's it called? Uh, Westwind, it's probably the highest damage dealing weapon in the game. I mean, it kind of just depends on compositions and stuff, but this thing's kind of crazy. It just does a lot of damage. And so it's the, the value of this thing is also brought out by pairing it with other strong weapons, as you can imagine. But let's go ahead and go through the description on this. When Phoenix rapid fire is used, that's a skill. It inflicts the Firebird Soul effect every third, sixth, and ninth arrow. Is there a preview button for this just to show? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say the game broke. So that's how that looks, right? So anyways, um, when the third attack of the, or of the basic attack hits, it inflicts Firebird Soul as well. So Firebird Soul, the user's core attack, da attack changes to Flame Shot. Increases flame shot damage by 70% per fire soul instance, stacking up to three times when the user uses flame shot, consumes all firebird soul instances, infinite uh, duration as well. Fills 34% of the user's core gauge every third, sixth, and ninth arrow of Phoenix Rapid Fire that, with that first dupe. That's crazy. So this thing, the more often you can use that core attack, the more damage this thing will do. And also on top of that, obviously, our boy Tusk has a lot of value with this. The, they've been doing a lot of core attack based stuff with Alicia, with this, uh, with uh, really anything can use that effectively. But, you know, more commonly with these types of recent releases. The last arrow of Phoenix Rapid Fire grants two instances of Firebird Soul Effect. So it also increases the max instances to four instances. 
and then the last dupe here, after obtaining Firebird Soul by using Phoenix Rapid Fire or the basic attack, the user regains the consumed Firebird Soul instances and 100% of their core gauge upon using Flame Shot. <laughs> yeah, this thing is crazy. <laughs> this thing is crazy. So that says nothing about the fact, like I said, it's going to just absolutely just destroy competition damage-wise. So... When you have it, you can pair with pretty much anything and be successful. You can pair it with the Scythe, the Grimoire. You can pair it with, uh, obviously, Plum Sword. But I wanted to talk about it because it is going to be one of those ones that you pair in the top combinations. Now, let's talk about Orb of Avarice. Orb of Avarice is arguably the next best fire weapon. Can I push it to 100? Uh, yeah, I can. Nice. Arguably the next best fire weapon in the game uh, because of the usefulness of it. So let's go ahead and come down here. It's another one that has some instance stacking stuff here. Increase the damage of Purgatory when the user uses Purgatory. Four instances are consumed. Uh, increase the damage of Purgatory by 50% increases MP consumption as well. Where is it at here? Here's Purgatory. Janu creates an explosion in front of him, and after launching the enemy into the air, explodes the enemy and slams him down to the ground. Inflicts airborne as well. Uh, so... Basically, recovers MP equal to the number of stacked Raging Black Flame instances times two every three seconds. Super strong recovering the MP there. Decrease the cooldown of Purgatory. And then the last dupe when the user enters the stage applies 30 instances of Raging Black Flame. <laughs> Raging Black Flame was the one where it increases the damage of Purgatory by 8%. When the user uses Purgatory, four instances are consumed. <laughs> that last dupe is insane. Eight eight stacks of thirty or eight, eight no no thirty stacks of an eight percent increase. Uh, and then when you use the skill, you only lose four. So. <laughs> and then also recovers MP equal to the number of stacked Raging Black Flame instances times two every three seconds. A lot of MP re recovery there. This thing's insane. It actually is insane, which is pretty... It fits this weapon pretty well. Uh, anyway, so this one is arguably the best fire weapon in the game. So once again, pairing it with Plum, ding, ding, ding. Uh, pairing it with Thetis, ding, ding, ding. Pairing it here, ding, ding, ding. You... so. You're not really pairing these weapons with too much other than those three, if that wasn't clear. Moonshadow is a good secondary sub just because of the damage spike from slowing the opponent. Uh, but I wanted to also now talk about Demon King's Longsword. So this thing is kind of interesting because it has awesome utility. However, some of these other weapons are just fine without anything. Like, for example, I don't. I think that the usefulness of the three main ones I've kind of talked about well, I guess four being the three darks and then the Thetis is Grimoire. The usefulness varies depending on how many advances they have, but at least a couple of them are good without any advances. The Plum Sword, obviously they get better, but it's at least good with none. Uh, thank you, Immortal. Make sure you subscribe like they did. And then Thetis Grimoire, obviously solid without any, but gets better when it has some. So it, this is okay with none. It's okay with none. And the utility of this is, is that it creates a shield, stuns the opponent, and then also increases the user's attack and does that consistent lightning damage around the uh, enemy for 10 seconds. Or around the ally nearby areas around the, the character, uh, Jinnu in this case, every 10, for 10 seconds every almost one second. So it just basically has a recurring lightning effect around. And so... What I can tell you about this is that it's the reason I brought up the whole, oh, some are better than others at certain levels is that this thing kind of requires advances to really, really get good. And the thing with this is that when it gets the fifth one, yeah, yeah. But, and this is not surprising. When lightning is used, depending on the success of the user's counterattack, additionally applies the effect of Benediction of the White Flames effect on the final Thunderbolt. No, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this. It's in here somewhere. Yeah, okay, the third one. The third one oftentimes is really strong on these. So you get to get the effect regardless of landing a counterattack, which is huge. It's huge. It's huge. So when you get the third advance on this, it gets crazy because now you no longer have to worry about relying on the opponent landing a hit against you. So this first advance is really strong too. You pick up Stroke of Lightning, which deals damage equal to 60% of attack. So... Inflicts a stroke of a lightning effect to the same target every five attacks. So they basically, basically what this is, this is basically a chip damage weapon. 
<laughs> that's pretty much what this thing is but with the way it works and it has utility with the stun the shield all that's great but uh it doesn't really shine until it gets higher on that's why as you can see i kind of just stopped working on it i liked it a lot used it a lot in early access but kind of moved on but i just wanted to throw it out there because it is the last ssr kind of that we didn't really talk about i guess we could talk about scatty too but you're gonna pair with the same same typical ones you could pair with west wind if you wanted to like i brought up earlier for the increased wind damage scatty strong weapon actually uh, it's just i think with this thing unless you've got a lot of dupes in it i think i think if you've got two really really okay okay i can say one but really that third one is really damn good really good uh so i, I one it becomes usable i don't think it's too usable before one but three to five like everything else is where it really shines and what it does is with that first dupe you get the domain that's why you don't i don't, I don't really think you use this without the first dupe you need the domain so when an attack lands while in the domain, you deal damage equal to 50% of the attack. So it, it, it's a huge damage spike. It increases water elemental damage by 10% when used within the domain as well. Ding, ding, ding. Obviously, that applies to your skills, other water weapons. See, that's why I said, like, you can do the double water thing. It's just if you've got them at my limit break levels, you're probably just, like I said earlier, better off using the plum as your secondary. And the, and the grimoire is better otherwise. So that's kind of where this thing kind of... You know struggles <clears throat> but it also can do some fun stuff too with the freeze when he snaps his fingers and stuff so there's utility there but the extra damage from this and the damage the defense penetration there is really strong but again best pairing would be a thetis grimoire or plum sword that's pretty much it so let's talk about some weapons that are powerful that i don't use a ton but i could and probably should Sung has some really fun SR weapons, by the way. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these ones that you don't really see much. But they got some fun mechanics in here. Like, interactions with all of your QTEs, Death, Collapse, and Shadow Step. That's a fun. That's some fun stuff. Hunting, Extreme Evasion, when he triggers that, it triggers the hunting effect, which increases the deck. There's some, there's some fun stuff. This one here does, it's like a mini Thetis Grimoire. Uh, freeze, and then it has Erosion as well. It's just weaker, right? It's unfortunate that they don't give us enough resources to use these. By the way, quick note, there is going to be a mechanic. There was a data mine for it a while ago that allows you to make these SRs into SSRs. And obviously at that point, they'll be more useful. So we'll see. But there's some fun stuff here. I like this thing. Surprise attack, increases critical hit rate. Uh, this is one that I think works well with the shadow step, right? So anyway, not going not gonna to talk about this too much. The only other one I'll bring up is the Cask uh, Venom thing because it does have bleed, right? So let's talk about uh, increases the user's defense penetration by 2.4, decay, uh, deals damage equal to 40% of attack per instance, increases fire damage, applies a shield equal to 15% of the user's max HP. Um, let's talk about the Dark Elephant. <laughs> Vulcan's Rage. I i don't know what they're kind of doing with this thing this thing needs like 10 buffs I, but it is unique because it increases attack speed which is not really a thing it gives a shield and then when the shield is up the damage of the attack is increased like this it this this on paper should be better than it is it even has interactions with core attacks which is really strong, obviously, given the core attack meta we're moving into. So it, in theory, should pair well with the Phoenix weapon, too, anyway. So it's just one of those fun weapons here that, uh, you know, probably should be better than it is. So <clears throat> let's talk about the bow here. This is arguably the best light weapon in the game. I actually, I guess we didn't talk about Huntsman much either. I actually cope for Huntsman. I like Huntsman a lot. The problem with Huntsman, and again, pairing it with the same stuff. It's very simple who to pair with. The problem with Huntsman is the condition for landing destroy kind of sucks. But uh, that other than that, I like it. I like it a lot. And then it requires that first dupe also. So it, it's another one that's not really usable without that. But when it gets that first one, it gets Sunder and Destroy and stuff. And it gets really strong. Uh, but the bow here, really, really crazy. Every time uh, the arrow of flashing light penetrates the target, increases the user's damage as well. Stacking up to... 20 times ding 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 increases light damage ignores the opponent's defense when using flash of light the effect of flash of light changes to where now it stuns decreases cooldown increases the damage of all attacks by 25 percent to stunned targets 
So if it wasn't clear, this thing stuns, makes you do more damage versus stun targets, has a defense uh, decrease in cooldown, uh, but also hits through defense while also increasing attack. This thing is, uh, I don't know, damn good. <laughs> damn good, right? <laughs> it's very strong. In fact, I should use it more, but like I said, I cope for Huntsman. <laughs> so this is one of those like peel their life off weapons where if you are using this thing, you could pair with nearly anything and be successful because it itself is the damage carry and it will just absolutely rip them apart. However, I'll also say when it's when it comes to uh, these effects, like right here, when using flashing light, ignoring different uh, defense, obviously that's not going to happen outside of that. doesn't matter what you're doing. Like as if you're using this as a sub weapon, for example, the value isn't as insane as a plum sword, but it's still strong, right? Increases the user's damage by 4% stacking up to 20 times, but you do have to use flash of light for the record to trigger that, which is this skill, uh, which is why that fourth dupe is strong. But I mean, it's an SR weapon. At least it's not an SSR weapon. Uh, this this uh, stun there is very strong, obviously, but then this last one, when you have the opponent stunned, it increases the damage. There's there's a world out there where you can pair this with the longsword, and that would be a fun combination for the stuns. You could even, you could, you know what I just thought, thought of? You could do some nasty cheesing with this, the longsword, and uh, some of those stunning counter skills <laughs> versus versus a job rank quest. Like, you could, you could do some nasty utility with that. <laughs> That could be a really fun come up. So outside of that, I mean, there's some other fun weapons like I talked about. I like this one a lot. I use this decently early on for the critical hit increases and stuff. But you know what you're going to kind of see is that only a few SR weapons being, you know, the two I have leveled up and then this bow pretty much are like the only ones that really can kind of transcend. Even I liked this one pretty early on. I thought it was pretty good. I think it still is pretty useful. It's just you get to a point where and this is where I'll end the video the way we started. You get to a point where you have to make the decision on the secondary weapon because the secondary weapon, you don't want to take a subpar secondary. And so that's where we circle back to Plum being that most of its stuff is actually everything it does is universal. So when you're deciding, you say, okay, What's the primary? Okay, I'm taking Huntsman. My secondary is the plum. It's that simple. It is that simple. And you know the thing is, evil with no dupes, you still get full bloom and plum flower. Three stacks of critical damages. It, that That's not matched by anything else here. And then also there's some attack and critical hit increase as well for rate. So like it's not matched by anything else here. So that's pretty much it guys uh but i do want to like i said give a little bit more of a shout out to moon shadow for the freezing of the opponent that's really strong all right guys hope you all enjoyed hopefully this was clear i thought i made it pretty clear like 15 times i told you it doesn't matter what your secondary is use a plum right but i still wanted to elaborate a bit more talk about some of these weapons individually and how you could pair them off and that is pretty much what we came up with. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure you hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next Solo Leveling Arise video.